You know what gets my goat. All right. That really gets my goat. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And we're back. And you know what gets my goat? This, this, this show that's just me trying to be clever. It didn't work. Okay, well, there you go. That gets my goat gets your goat. So, yeah, we're back with another uh, that gets my goat. This one is half on the go. <laughs> I'm on the go. Rich Outfield is on the stay. And since I'm a captive audience, he's decided to uh, give me a call. And, and we're going to play a little game today. It's a little game that has to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which began 10 years ago, but probably not 10 years ago today, right? When was it? It was uh, in July or something? I think it was about 10 years ago today. Oh, man. By the so time this Iron Man was out, a May movie? Yeah. Iron Man came out huh? in May, but we'll release this after the... The Avengers 3 episode. So it'll be a little bit later. I mean, unless you can think of a reason why we shouldn't. <laughs> why we should do this one first? Yeah, right. probably not. The Avengers one is actually timely. And we need to get on top of that first. We need to be the first to spoil it. <laughs> the people that uh, record stuff, like on a Friday and it's out the next day or it's out that day... I've never understood how that's possible. People that do it live. Yeah, F it, we'll do it live. So we've been around almost for 10 years too. Shoot, I'm trying to remember what we did about Iron Man. Did we, we, didn't, we obviously didn't do a show about Iron Man because we didn't start till July. But we did do a show about The Dark Knight. Yeah. And that was the same summer, so I'm wondering if maybe we did do an Iron Man show. We did do a show about Wally that summer too, but was that that same year? Yeah, it was. I know we definitely did one about Iron Man two. Yeah. But yeah, we probably missed the chance to to hit the first movie. It was the Hulk was that same summer, right? It was. Maybe I should look and see exactly when these suckers came out. I don't remember doing one about the Incredible Hulk either. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we didn't. Well, we really blew that, you know? We, we should have been on the ball. We really didn't get into doing movies too extensively until later when we started up That Gets My Goat. That was when we uh, started talking movies and comic books and TV shows and stuff like that. We, I remember when we did The Dark Knight, we kind of felt a little bad about it. And I think we may have put out a version of the story without the uh, post story talk so the people if they just wanted to listen to the story could just do that because if i remember right too with the batman one we did like basically a drabble as the story it was like a three minute story it was like the shortest one we've ever done hmm yeah i do remember back when we would do different versions of the show i do remember there being a long version of the Dark Knight episode and a shorter version of the Dark Knight episode. Okay, so Iron Man came out 10 years ago yesterday. Oh, wow. For us, but this will come out closer to the release of the Incredible Hulk's 10th anniversary, which was June 13th. Ah, June, okay. Yeah, they went like a whole year after that without a release, didn't they, before they did Iron Man 2? Right, there were two years in between Incredible Hulk and Iron Man 2. It's a shame they should have delayed Hulk to be the, the release the next summer. Right. And just worked on it a little bit longer. I don't know. I mean, they, those two were kind of independent, because Paramount released Iron Man and Universal released Hulk even though they were both made by Marvel Studios. Yeah, that was pre-Disney days. Yeah. All right, so we've got 10 years of Marvel movies. Do you know how many films there are in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far? I want to say that you or somebody like that said that there was 18, but is that right or is that way off? Well, it's not way off. I think... Avengers Infinity War was the 19th. Ah, okay. Maybe that's what I heard. The 18 movies prior to this. So now we're at 19. 
Right. All right. And when this comes out, we'll be almost at 20 because Ant-Man comes out this summer. Yeah. Ant-Man comes out soon, too, right? It doesn't wait until, like, August or July or... I, I think it is, oh, July. it is July. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to remember. Somebody just the other day was talking about how much better the Marvel Cinematic Universe has done than the Star Wars franchise. And to me, it's kind of apples and oranges because there have been nine Star Wars movies, ten if you count the Clone Wars animated film, and I don't. Do you? I wouldn't. I never, I've never even seen it, so... That's been 40 years. Nine movies over 40 years. Right. And then Marvel Cinematic Universe. I guess uh, Star Wars will have 10 movies over 41 years by the end of this summer. And Marvel Studios will have had 20 movies over 10 years. (sighs) I mean, it's not comparable because everything makes so much more money now. And every record is broken next week after nine months but if you do the uh adjusted for inflation thing you know the the marvel cinematic universe movies are not what there might be one or two of them up there i don't know how many of them made big money but star wars has like number one and number four and number six and number eight i mean they have a bunch of them up in the top of all time adjusted for inflation which you've got to do it if you're going to take, you know, if you're going to compare movies all made in after 2008 to movies made in 1977. Otherwise, it is apples to oranges. Yeah, I mean, like think about the James Bond franchise. So 1962 to whenever Spectre came out is what, 25 movies? 26 movies? Adjusted for inflation, that's probably a crazy number, right? Yeah, I would think. I mean, I don't know how well they've all done, but... The uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out July 6th. Oh, okay, so it is it's basically our 10th anniversary. <laughs> all right, should we get back to the show? We've had enough outtakes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, in honor of Marvel's Cinematic Universe's 10th anniversary... I thought it would be fun, and I've done a couple of these, and I don't know if they're entertaining for the audience or just entertaining for me, (laughs) or if the audience has ever even heard these, but I thought it would be fun to quiz you on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. See how many quotes you, and by extension, the audience, can recognize from these movies. That's right, yeah, the the, the audience can, can play along at home. So uh, they can be there yelling at, at the, their iPhone or their... What do people listen to files on now? It is just their phone. Nobody listens on an iPod, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if pod catchers or any of that stuff are even necessary anymore. They just... It goes to their phones. They can listen so in their car. Could, they could just be yelling at their phone saying, Come on, Anklovich, you're an idiot! It's clearly the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, there's going to be some of them where I think I might have a hard time. Come on, Anklevich. Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance wasn't even a Marvel movie. <laughs> so you got a quote from all Marvel Studios films, and didn't you say you had like 30-some-odd quotes, though? Yeah, I have 33, because I just looked up each movie in order to find a quote, and some I found more than one quote, so I found it fun to grab like an, an easy quote and a more difficult quote. Okay. And then to make it fair, I put them in alphabetical order so that even I wouldn't say, okay, so the next one is The Inhumans, and uh, <laughs> the one that was came out after that was the Black Widow solo movie. And So you put the quotes in alphabetical order, like by the word that they start with? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, that'll be interesting. No, no, I don't think it will. But to make it interesting for me, I thought that I would do all the quotes in the voice of fake Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, lovely. That'll make it so much easier to figure these out. Well, I have to be entertained in some way. Are you sure about that, Rich Outfield? Yeah. Are you ready? I, I guess I'm ready. And, are, and you folks at home, are you ready? 
Uh, give us a minute. Okay, and, and once more, I know <laughs> I always say this, but I have to say it anyway. Please, no wagering. Okay. So, uh, question, uh, quote number one. Any contender who defeats my champion, their freedom, they shall win. I'm going to go with Thor Ragnarok on this one. That is correct. Yes! Oh, I'm off to a good start. Yeah, I was going to say that had to be from the uh, arena thing, so I guess that's the obvious quote. Well, we'll see. Okay, so quote two. Are you up for this? Are you? Look, I just need to know, because the city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots, and I have a bow and arrow. <laughs> okay, this has got to be an Avengers movie, because nobody with a bow and arrow appeared. I guess he did appear in the first Thor movie, but that one doesn't count. I'm saying Flying City, bow and arrow, it's got to be Age of Ultron. Avengers 2. That is correct. Yeah. All right, you ready? Next one is not so easy. Uh oh. Baskin Robbins always finds out. Okay, I think I know this one. I think this has got to be a scene with Nick Fury in it. I think that's where he took Tony in Iron Man 2 to talk with him. Is that it? Is it Iron Man 2? Oh, I'm sorry, it's not. Oh. When Scott Lang for, gets out of jail, no one will hire him. Oh. Except for Baskin Robbins. And then they find out he's a convicted felon. That's... And he says, oh, so you found out. And the boss says, Baskin Robbins always finds out. Okay, I remember that. Darn it. Where did they go in that scene in Iron Man 2? Do you remember where he took him to? It was like a fast food place. I think it was a donut shop. Was it a donut place? Because at some point, Tony was in the donut, right? And Sam Jackson says, please come out of the donut, mother... <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and, then he, and then he turned to dust. Oh. Before he managed to get the word out. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> okay, number four, you ready? Yep. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? That's it, huh? That's a short quote. Darn it. I'm trying to think if there is any other film than the one that first pops to mind that it might be from. Can't say where exactly it's from, but I want to say that this got to be from Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not. Ah. I wanted to give you hints, and I'm wondering if Arnold Schwarzenegger makes it too hard <laughs> because his intonation is different than Steve Rogers w would have been. But this was actually the easy quote from Captain America 2. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Oh, that's in the elevator. In the elevator, yeah, it was in the trailer. Oh, darn it. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking there had to be something like that on Guardians of the Galaxy before they did something really dumb. Dang, I'm, I'm only at 50% now. Just like humanity. That was the easy quote for Captain America 2, huh? Just like humanity. Too soon. Oh, man. Sorry. Okay, question number five. Don't make me hungry. You wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. I'm assuming that's an Incredible Hulk quote. But is it from The Incredible Hulk or is it from one of the Avengers movies? can't remember that one. I'm going to go down again. All right, we'll just go with Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. You are correct. Oh, yes! This was his broken Portuguese. Oh. Where he was trying to say, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. But he forgot the word for angry. And he said hungry instead. Yeah, you, you probably haven't seen that movie in 10 years. I vaguely remember that scene. Yeah, I remember that he was in Brazil, like, working in a factory or something there when they came in to try and get him. That, that's weird that he would say hungry instead of angry because it's not like that word sounds the same in a different language. Right, it's just a joke for the subtitles. <laughs> it doesn't work in any other language, but oh well. So you got that one. Number six. 
here's what I need. A laptop, a digital watch, a cell phone, the pneumatic actuator from your bazooka over there, a map of town, a big spring, and a tuna fish sandwich. Um, gosh, I should know this one. Until it went to the funny thing with the tuna fish sandwich, I wanted to say that this was Avengers and that that was Hawkeye telling Loki what he needed to be able to go and steal that guy's eyeball or whatever that they did when they went to the opera. Ah, okay. And then he like popped his bow out and does that thing where it extends. But I don't think that's it because Hawkeye's not a jokey character like that. Yeah, especially not while he was under Loki's spell. Right. Let's see, there's enough goofy characters like that. There's enough smart talking scientists that it makes it hard. Because it could have been Bruce Banner, it could have been... Uh, I'm going to go with Iron Man. We're going to say Iron Man on that one. You know, I'd, I'd probably say this was the hardest one of the whole 33. It's actually Iron Man 3, something that I haven't seen since the theater. It seems like you haven't either. Yeah, me neither. But he befriends that little boy somewhere out in Wisconsin or something like that. And the boy wants to help him rebuild his suit. And that's Tony's line. But did you, didn't you? did he just say something about a bazooka? Oh, he did. Maybe he's not saying it to the boy. <laughs> Why the hell would the kid have a bazooka? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should cut that line then. <laughs> so that was Iron Man 3. See, my guess was that it was what he was saying to the terrorist when he was in the cave and they tried to make him build... Uh, bomb the jericho or whatever it was called but no, it was, that you know that makes sense it was close though it was the right franchise at least so that makes me three and three right i don't know i'm still keeping up you're behind gino for those playing at home but you're ahead of marshall oh okay i'm at least keeping up with humanity <laughs> okay um number seven i don't know if you've been in a fight before but there's usually not this much talking. Dang it, this one sounds really familiar. Where did this come from? Oh, this has got to be Captain America uh, Civil War. Captain America Civil War. That's somebody talking to Spider-Man or it's Spider-Man Homecoming. Crap. I'm going to go with Civil War, though. You are correct, sir. Yeah. You almost talked yourself out of it. I was afraid because, I mean, I figured who it was that was saying it, but then he's got his own movie, too, and I'm just like, well, who, who they were saying it to. Who is it that says it to him? Uh, Falcon says it. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, he keeps asking everyone, oh, cool, what are, the, what are these wings? Are they made of a uh, kind of alloy? <laughs> You've got a robotic arm? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Uh-huh. Number eight. I know that it's confusing. It is one thing to question the official story and another thing entirely to make wild accusations or insinuate that I'm a superhero. Shoot, that one's hard. It doesn't sound familiar for some reason. Obviously I've seen it, but I've got it now. That's the end of Iron Man where he's in the press conference and then all of a sudden, a second later, he says, okay, I am Iron Man. Well done. And everyone goes, oh, 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 and then it cuts. Yes, that puts me ahead of humanity. I'm at five and three. Okay, I don't know what number we're on. Sorry, I keep going. It's number nine I, now. I keep going ahead, trying to figure out if that was the easy Iron Man quote or the hard one. But actually, <laughs> that was the hard one, so. Oh, good. Number nine number is what nine. you're on now. I know this neighborhood. I got beat up in that alley. And that parking lot. And behind that diner. I know this question. That was said by Captain America, the first Avenger. My buddy uh, Jeff moved to Germany. And you know what uh, Captain America is called there? The first Avenger. Yeah. Oh, I've told you this many, many, many times. No, you haven't. But I've heard that before. They just dropped America out of the title. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the second one was called The First Avenger 2, The Winter Soldier. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, 
little bit, little bit of trivia for you there. I uh, I did not know that. Did you know that? <laughs> that is wild stuff. All right. Um, let's see. Number ten. Now, should I do it in that voice, or should I do it? Continue to do Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it's up to you. The Schwarzenegger seemed to have been a uh, a condition of the game, so I thought it had to be Schwarzenegger. But if you want to just change it up to all different impressions, you know, it's your game after <coughs> all. I, I, the Schwarzenegger does make it harder, though, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Number ten. If you could make God bleed, people would cease to believe in him. There will be blood in the water. The sharks will come. All I have to do is sit back and watch as the world consumes you. You know, I want to say... I want to say that that is also Captain America Civil War. I want to say that Bar Baron Von Strucker, no, it's not Baron Von Strucker, it's, what was the guy's name? Baron Z Zemo? Is he called Baron Zemo? Not in the movie. But he is Zemo, here. right? Yes. And Baron Zemo is his full name, right? In the comics. Okay, yeah, I was... I was trying to remember what his title was. Count Zemo, uh, Lord Zemo. <laughs> I knew he had some kind of title. W am I right? Was that him? No, you're not right. Damn! <sighs> Maybe this was the hardest one. See, the movies that I haven't seen over and over again were hard. Right. But that one was Iron Man 2. That was... Uh, Vanko, was his name Anton Vanko? No, uh, Ivan Vanko saying that to okay. Iron Man. All okay. All right. Darn it. So you are losing, and it sounds like you're home already. I am home, but that's fine. I can just hang out and finish this game up. Okay, you ready? Yep. Number 11. I'll give you one chance. You ready? You walk through those doors and you forget any of this happened. And don't you ever, ever interfere with my business again. Because if you do, I'll kill you and everyone that you love. I'll kill you dead. That's what I'll do to protect my family. Hmm. You know, I want say that that's Spider-Man Homecoming. I want to say that that's Vulture threatening somebody. So I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to go with it. I know that that doesn't always work out for me, but I'm going to do it. That's how uh, people on... Uh, what's that game? The, the, the show with the final answer? <laughs> right. That's well, how they lose what, their million dollars. <laughs> no, what was that show called? Uh, who Wants to Be a Millionaire? That's how the people on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire would, would stretch that show out to 30 minutes. Is before they'd answer, they'd explain their, their thought process. And if they didn't, the host would say, Why do you say three? Uh, you are correct. Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, that's, I was just, uh, I was talking about that. There was a show on, well, I, I assume it was NBC, but I'm not sure. There was a show on one of the stations, a, a new game show, and it has Fred Savage as the host, I think. And, and it had Ricky Gervais with a panel of a bunch of little kids. And they would ask the, they would ask a contestant, a question and say, okay, um, you know, here's a question. And then the contestant would try and get it. And if they got it wrong, then they would go to the kids and they would ask the kids the question. And if the kids could get it right, then he would, the kids would save that guy 
and he could go on. So he had like double chances of winning if the kids could get the, and surprisingly the kids got the answer a lot. But yeah, every time they asked him a question, they had a story. Uh, they had to have told these people. There's no way that these people just did this every time. They just had a story for the answer to every question. Yeah, that's how they dragged it out for so long. They would get through like one. I guess they spent way less money that way because... Uh, what, not... what was the other game show that was really, really popular for a while there? Well, they had the evil British chick with the glasses. They would say, the you are leak. the we Oh, there you go. I wanted to say the biggest loser, but it didn't sound right. I remember whenever they were, it was time to like vote somebody off. She would ask them, Harvey, why do you want to vote Allison off? You'd just be like, dude, who cares? Let's just go on with the game. But they had to stretch the bloody thing. Yeah. I, it might even have been an hour long game show. Yeah, I, I think yeah. Uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was an hour long too. Damn them. Okay, number 12. I'm made of rocks, as you can see. But don't let that intimidate you. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> I'm made of rocks, as you can see. Don't let that intimidate you. Unless you're made of scissors. I'm pretty sure that's Thor uh, Ragnarok. Because that would, our guy who tried to start a rebellion but didn't hand out enough flyers. Yes, you're correct, sir. Yes! That's a million dollars. I've lost count of how well I'm doing, though. I've gotten several in a row and I've forgotten where I'm at. Yeah, that's right. You have the choice of banking or uh, continuing to play for... Uh... <laughs> that's right. I've, I've, I've made $25,000 so far. That's a lot of money. You can leave now and take all of that with you. Or you can play for 100000 What do you want to do? All right, number 13. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> okay, that one's Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Correct. How did you know? Uh, I don't know. That, that wasn't the easy one, was it? I saw somebody with a bumper sticker of that on their card just the other day, and that's why I chose that. Oh, nice. I want to say it was how it should have ended or something like that. They made a uh, joke video where it was the Mary Poppins, the new trailer. And then uh, instead of it being Mary Poppins, it turned out to be Yondu. And he comes flying in holding his, uh, his arrow. And they did all this stuff from the movie and then had Yondu's quotes worked into him instead. I'll have to watch that. Pretty good. Instead of playing this game. Yes, see ya. All right, number 14. If you can believe it, we're not even halfway through this damned thing. <laughs> a third of the people have already turned it off. And they were the wise ones. Number 14. It's everything you've ever wanted. Eternal life as part of the one. You're not gonna like it. I think that that is Doctor Strange, right? Isn't that where they're trying to become part of the one? It's gotta be Doctor Strange. That surprises me. Yes, you got that one right. <laughs> you don't think you would have got that if you were placed in the same situation? I wouldn't have, no. I, but I guess I just don't know that movie very well. I don't know that I know it very well either, but... All right, you ready? It's the unspoken truth of humanity that you crave subjugation. The bright lure of freedom diminishes your life's joy in the mad scramble for power, for identity. You were made to be ruled. In the end, you will always kneel. The last time I was in Berlin and a man was asking people to kneel, I can't remember what he says, but isn't that uh, Avengers? It is. Wow, you. Uh, that, that's a super long quote. Maybe I should have shortened it. Maybe it became too... <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you this, but uh, in, uh, I want to say, 2013, uh, when I went to the uh, Thor Dark World panel... At Comic-Con, Tom Hiddleston came out in his Loki costume, and he gave that whole speech, and, uh, and we knelt. <laughs> That's right. You were made to kneel. It was kind of wonderful. <laughs> it was some kind of wonderful. All right. Number 16. Uh, you can't always get what you want. Okay, number what? 
Number 16, longing, rusted, 17, daybreak, furnace, nine, benign, homecoming, one, freight car. Okay, that one is S Captain America Civil War. That's the list of words that Baron Zemo says to uh, take over Winter Soldier's mind and make him a bad guy and do what he wants. Right? That's correct. Yes. Do you think they'll ever touch on that again, or is that completely forgotten now? Well, depends on what happens with uh, Winter Soldier. Whether they're able to restore everyone from dust or not. Should we, should we have put a spoiler warning at the start of the show? No. <clears throat> All right. Number 17. Look, you screwed the pooch hard. Big time. But then you did the right thing. You took the dog to the clinic. You raised the hybrid puppies. All right. Not my best analogy. <laughs> that one is tough. I, I'm sh almost 100% certain that that is Tony Stark saying that phrase. Okay. But he's in <laughs> way too many of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Which one that is? This could be Spider-Man Homecoming. Could be any of the Avengers. Could be Captain America Civil War. I'm going to go with Spider-Man. Spider-Man Homecoming on that one. That is correct. Oh, yes. Sounds like you know what's going on, man. That was really kind of a shot in the dark. <laughs> we may have to split this into six episodes because it's going on so long. Number 18. My weapons contain enough destructive power to decimate every hostile capital on Earth. Quite simply, gentlemen, I have harnessed the power of the gods. Hmm. This one just doesn't sound familiar to me for some reason. Saying hostile capital, that should be important. And somebody has weapons, harness the power of the gods. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess Age of Ultron. Do you need a hint first before you guess? <laughs> I assume that means Age of Ultron is wrong. I guess you can give me a hint if that's, I didn't know that was a possibility. The accent is not far off. Oh, okay, so it's Batman and Robin. <laughs> Kill the heroes. Oh, it's got to be Captain America, the first Avenger then, huh? It is. That's got to be Red, Red that Skull is, uh, speaking. Red Skull talking to the, uh, the Third Reich guys, I believe. All right. Have you been keeping track? I, I feel bad that... We don't have a judge writing down. Yeah, that puts me at 14 and 4. I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, you are. Number 19. Oh, screw you, you big green asshole. I'll do it myself. Uh, I'm going to guess Avengers Infinity War for that one. That is correct. Yeah. You know, I really expected him to hulk out inside the Hulkbuster armor. I couldn't wait to see that happen and it didn't happen. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh, I think that's going to be a big, you're going to have a rematch of him against Thanos at some point. Going to be a big thing in the next film. Okay, number 20. Okay, I just have one question. Who are you? Who is she? What the hell is going on? And can I go back to jail now? Huh. I'm going to say Ant-Man on that one. That is correct. Yeah. Somebody went to jail. That's pretty much all. <laughs> Even Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were in the jail as well. All right, number 21. One son who wanted the throne too much and another who will not take it. Is this my legacy? Uh, we're going to say Thor Dark World on that one. That is correct. Wow. Yeah, baby. You rock, man. Okay, number 22. Ooh, sorry. Funny how annoying a little prick can be, isn't it? 
Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, I think I've got it. Uh, this is Doctor Strange. It's not. Oh, darn this it. This is uh, Iron Man 2. Oh, Iron Man 2. This is when Gary Shandling is giving Tony Stark the medal at the end of the movie, and he, he uh, jabs okay. him with it. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking a, t a Tony Stark kind of a thing, but then I thought, oh, that it was the Rachel McAdams character take, doing something for Doctor Strange. Number 23. The world is changing. Soon there will only be the conquered and the conquerors. I'd rather be the former. Darn. We've gotten to the hard part. It's going to be two in a row I'm going to get wrong. That one is hard. Conquered and the Conquerors. Shoot, man, I don't know about this one. Okay, that one is Black Panther. Oh, shoot. Who, who said that in Black Panther? I have, I have no memory of that line. You'll just have to take my word for it. I, I, don't, I don't recognize that quote. Yeah, I was going to say maybe that was from the start where they go to Oakland. It could be. I, I, I was trying to think of who it would be that would say the former. Because there's no way Killmonger would... He was too street to say something like that. Yeah. I'm trying to put it into Google to see if it brings anything up. But once again, my computer, <clears throat> even to do a Google search, it's back-breaking labor. Yeah, mine's getting to be that way too, unfortunately. Waiting for www.google.com. Transferring data from www.google.com. W, W, W. Always love that every... Okay, so King T'Chaka says, said to T'Challa, the world is changing. Soon there will only be the conquered and the conquerors. You are a good man with a good heart, and it's hard for a good man to be a king. So it was the dream sequence or afterlife sequence. Huh, okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, I don't think you get that one, sir. Yeah, I don't think Number so. 24. The world will be his, the universe yours, and the humans, what can they do but burn? <sighs> the world will be his, the universe yours, and the humans, what can they do but burn? Shoot. See, I'm thinking Avengers. Because the world would be Loki's and the universe would be... But I don't think so. That doesn't sound right. I'm going to go Doctor Strange. You're incorrect. It was Avengers. Oh, and it was the serious? world will be Loki's, the universe will be Thanos's. Oh. And the humans, what can they do but burn? Are you so serious? right before the title sequence comes up. Or what do you call it? The prologue of the Avengers. pre credit scene or the mid credit scene when then he says, to fight them is to court death. <laughs> no, this is the before the movie even begins. Oh, okay. It's the other talking. Right. And then uh, it cuts to the shield base where the uh, Tesseract is being kept. Yeah, okay. I was right and I doubted myself. Yeah. You talked yourself out of a correct answer. Number 25. There are two types of beings in the universe. Those who dance and those who do not. Yeah, I get it, Drax. I'm a dancer. Gamora's not. Problem is, was that Guardians of the Galaxy 1 or 2? <laughs> I think it's Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That is correct. Oh, yes. Well done. That was another a trailer line i believe yeah i do remember it from the trailer he says you just need to find a woman who is pathetic <laughs> like you all right number 26 this is my favorite this is the age of miracles doctor and there is nothing more horrifying than a miracle hmm and when you say doctor that makes it seem like it should be doctor strange but there's also dr banner Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to guess Doctor Strange. No, th this one is really, really hard. Yeah? Because it's a Joss Whedon line from the post credit sequence of Captain America Winter Soldier. It is uh, Baron Von Strucker 
revealing the twins. Oh. And he says, this is no longer an age of heroes. This is the age of miracles, Doctor. And there is nothing more horrifying than a miracle. Okay. I remember that bit now. That wasn't fair, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Number 27. We all know the truth. More connects us than separates us. But in the times of crisis, the wise build bridges while the foolish build barriers. That is the end speech to like the UN on Black Panther. That is correct. Yeah. How are you doing? I am at uh, 19 and 8. Ah. So still got a winning percentage. <laughs> All right. Number 28. When the dust settles, the only thing living in this world will be metal. I'm going to say Age of Ultron with that one. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Number 29. Whosoever wieldeth this dildo, if he be horny, will have the power of the mighty whore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, dude. That is from the porno movie, The Mighty Whore, The Dork World. I don't know how that ended up on here. Just, just a second. Let me... That was a good one, though. That's my favorite Marvel movie so far. The Marvel Skinematic Universe. <laughs> All right. Sorry. New number 29. So that's a freebie for everybody. Except for you, sir. Okay, number 29. You can't park here, buddy. Earth is closed today. Okay. That sounds really familiar. I'm trying to pinpoint what it was from. Earth is closed today. So there's got to be an alien involved. And that's a wisecracking hero there. All right, one more time. You can't park here, buddy. Earth is closed today. I want to say Avengers because those are aliens, but I don't think that's it. I was thinking Guardians of the Galaxy because you get aliens there, but I don't think I don't think they ever went to Earth. Thor, Dark World, maybe with the uh, dark elves showing up. But that just doesn't seem right either. Okay, we'll say Avengers. First one. Yeah. Maybe it's Avengers Infinity War. Maybe there's a... Oh, yeah, that's got to be it, right? It's Infinity War. It is. It's Tony Stark toward the beginning of that movie when the ship lands there in New York or comes down. All right. Number 30. You have betrayed the express command of your king. Through your arrogance and stupidity, you've opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to the horror and desolation of war. You are unworthy of these realms. You're unworthy of your title. You're unworthy of the loved ones you have betrayed. That one is Thor, the second Avenger. That is correct. <laughs> what was that one called? It was just called Thor, right? It didn't have any other name. They were going to call it Thor, the mighty Avenger for some cowardly reason. But no, it just ended up being called Thor. You are a silly, stupid little boy. That's right. That's that same speech. Number 31, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but that super soldier project was put on ice for a reason. I've always felt that hardware was much more reliable. Okay, Let's see, where did they use a super soldier? Was it, okay, this, is this in The Incredible Hulk? That is correct, wow. I didn't think you'd get that one. Was this from the end scene where uh, Tony Stark comes and talks to what's-his-face? Yep. To Thunderbolt? That's the giveaway, is I've always felt that hardware was much more reliable. Right. All right. We're in the home stretch, sir. Number 32. Yeah. You're a man looking at the world through a keyhole. You've spent your whole life trying to widen that keyhole, to see more, to know more. And now, on hearing that it can be widened in ways you can't imagine, you reject the possibility. Uh, this one's Doctor Strange. That is right. Is that the ancient one talking to him when he's first trying out? Yep. Got it. And here you go. The last question. Oh, I'm going to totally trip and fall trying to go across the finish line. 
You think you're the only superhero in the world? Mr. Stark, you've become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Okay, obviously we're talking to Iron Man here. I want to say this is Iron Man 2, but I think I've gotten two Iron Man 2 ones wrong already. And there's only two for each, right? Right. Oh, this is Iron Man 1. This is the end. When Nick Fury comes out. That is correct. Because I am Iron Man. You think you're the only superhero in the world. So I didn't trip going across the finish line. All right. <laughs> what is your final score? My final score is 25 and 8. Wow. That's a pretty good record. That would get me in the playoffs, I think. Well, for those Please. listening at home, feel free to post your scores if you haven't taken your lives by this point <laughs> because of how miserable this game show experience was. And if you have taken your lives, hopefully you made sure to put the request in your will for whoever is the executor to post your score on the comment section. <laughs> this is the estate of Carl S. Jenkins <laughs> posting... 27 and 6, yeah. You have been trounced, Mr. Anklevich. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> you get nothing. Yes, that's actually the truth. Everyone who has played this game, regardless of your score, you get nothing. In fact, you've lost an hour you can never get back. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> you stole fizzy lifting drinks. You get nothing. I don't know if this was successful or not. It felt like it went on way, way, way too long. But in my head, this was vastly entertaining and would keep you occupied on your drive home. We learn by doing. Well, I had fun. Oh. I don't know if anyone else did, but I enjoyed it. So there's that. All right. Thank you for uh, suffering through that with me. There is nothing more horrifying than another episode of That Gets My Goat. Thanks for listening to another horrifying episode of That Gets My Goat, everybody. We'll see you again <laughs> next time. I've been Rich Outfield. And I have been Big Anklevich. And I've been fake Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, thanks for attending, thank, thank fake you. Arnold. Ah, no problem. It's good to get out of the house. Well, good night. Yeah, see ya. Jaloop. <laughs> you know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? Maybe we could do a, for the episode art, some kind of faux poster of the Avengers or of some of these movies. But Arnold Schwarzenegger's head is like on Iron Man's body and Black <laughs> Widow's body. I'm going to leave that up to you, sir, because that sounds like a lot of work. Oh, no. <laughs> It'll be the Arnold Cinematic Universe.